Hey everyone, welcome to this um, after church tea time. I'm really happy to be with you. I'm Yurin, and I'm accompanied with Lugenda and Grenville today to talk about um, <coughs> this service, this Sunday service. And Laurentiu and Alexandra's sermon about the fastest way to heal upsets. And yeah, so we're just gonna discuss our feeling about the discussion and like to breathe and and see like the insights that we we had listening to it. And yeah, I'm just gonna open the floor to you guys and and start with asking how did you feel about about that sermon and that service in general? Well, I feel, feel for me it brought a lot of clarity, like in going deeper with just the mirror exercise and healing. So that felt for me like, yeah, it made it uh, easier in a way to yeah, a very clear explanation how, yeah, how, how you can just do it even better and how to master it even more so you can, yeah, flow more and move faster and also feel uh, yeah really good with doing the spiritual work as well yeah yes I, th I think the thing that stood out for me is just you know again just the simplicity I, th I, th I feel like there's a lot of times that we just get brought back to the simplicity and also just the releasing of the, the potential resistance that shows up in so many different ways. And just reminding ourselves that it's okay for those things to be there. Even the resistance, it's okay for it to be there. It's kind of not okay for it to stay, but it's okay for it to be there. Yeah, I do agree. I feel like um, it was a very supportive sermon and it seemed uh, simple, um, you know, a concept, but like the fact that it was a half an hour sermon about that shows that like maybe we need a lot of support in this place. And I guess what, what I see when I guess what I experienced when I was new to the Twin Flame journey and what I see people doing when they're new to the Twin Flame journey is like making it harder than it needs to be because we're not used to actually doing the inner work and you're not, we're not used to things being simple uh, in that way and we're not used to not controlling. And so it's really what, the the journey is really about is like um you know the life of the life of your dreams harmonious union they're your birth birthright you know but the only thing that prevents you from having it is the resistance and uh, uh i feel that this sermon was needed because um people don't realize that it's their own resistance to this but that blocks them to, to having their good. That blocks us from having our twin things or having the life that we truly desire. And um, having that reminder, it's so powerful because um, I think it's so grounding and also reassuring that, hey, you know, there is no, there's no upset that is too great or too big um, for us. We were built to to be able to overcome like all these challenges, and and I think that's that's truly really amazing. Yeah, I loved really that uh, no upset is too big. That they talked about a lot about that wall, and you feel that wall and how to move through it because I often experience that too. And then like they said, oh, I 
heel ouder of zet, en dan durf ik deel deze val. En en dan zou dat, ja, dat het uh, next to, ja, just releasing the resistance, dat het helpt to just find safety, like, or more support into healing that. So I've experienced that too, that, that I just needed to find a safe place or more support in healing that. And yeah, sometimes it's needed. And, But you can still move through the route, and that's that's really I love that the most. That you can just and heal anything, like you said, even the biggest, hardest of all. Or, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel it's very much about like dramatizing, if I can say that the the inner work in the journey. Can you say that again? Dramatizing. Oh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was like, what was that word? <laughs> and I think, you know, like, I, I have to agree with you. Like, I, I feel like th there's a, for me, there's always like this energy of impatience. Like, the undercurrent is this impatience that something needs to happen faster or differently, or that that upset shouldn't exist, you know? And so I feel like the sermon was, was just a good reminder to actually be patient with ourselves and to accept what's there. I mean, accepting it doesn't, again, accepting it doesn't mean that it needs to stay. It's just accepting that that exists in that moment and being prepared to actually look at it. And I feel like that's probably the bigger part of learning how to become comfortable that upsets exist and that we can heal them and it, you know it's like it's like like alexander shared like there has yet to be an upset that i haven't been able to heal and just that just thinking about that sorry something just clicked in my kitchen that i need to go and check it's like literally did some weird thing i will be back Yeah, I, I just love what he just said, like, there's nothing that can be healed that you still have to find that upset that can be healed because these are uh, not real anyway. So how would it be possible that it can be healed and it would be real, you know? So, yeah. I can't hear you. Sorry, I was muted for this whole time and I didn't know I thought I was unmuted. <laughs> yeah, because separation is not real. Yeah. And um, yeah, I was just saying that I think the thing in your kitchen agreed with you, Brandil. <laughs> it was I don't know, like, it's ne like there's never weird noises in my house. But like today that just happened, I was like, what's that about? But I, I, you know, like, I think it's just in line with the comment that I was sharing, like, actually, you know, it's okay for these things to exist and for us to look at it, to look at them. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, okay, well, go and look at this now. <laughs> so I had such a cackle as well. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. But I think you were talking about judgment and we were talking about control um, a few minutes earlier. And... I think those are the two um, big things that can block your journey, prevent it from moving forward. And the two big, thing, big things that consist of, you know, uh, make up resistance uh, to the inner work. And uh, I loved that she, uh, Alexandra shared the example of this upset like i'm i'm upset at my twin flame because he stole my fries <laughs> it was super funny but i think there was some truth in that like it was so ridiculous but it's the truth of upsets like they are ridiculous um 
they sometimes you wonder like really god i'm upset at that really truly <laughs> you know so you're judging that thing and um <laughs> And and of course you're like yeah well this is too ridiculous like obviously this is not true so I'm gonna bypass that which is like obviously a mistake because you you're feeling some type of way about that even if even if it's like a little thing and there's no little upset is what we're learning here and the other side of this is um, I guess. Most of the time we were all like we healed something and and we're like, oh, I cannot believe that I didn't see that sooner or that I didn't understand that sooner. And yet again, we're judging where we are. We're judge, judging like the base of things. We're judging, we're judging ourselves and our divinity, and um, we're not trusting God in this process of like, actually this upset, it showed up at this time for a reason. Not sooner, not later, because you needed that lesson at that time. And it's okay if you didn't need that lesson at that time or that you didn't heal it at that time because it didn't present in that way. And yeah, in the process of de-dramatizing, you know, the inner work, I think um, there are dice to just like write it down. Um, it's super powerful. Jeff and Julia like always say that, like write it down. Um, because if it's in our mind, like it can be clouded with thoughts of, of doubt and, and judgment. And, and we have a tendency to not be as compassionate with ourselves as we would be to another person or if we if we were in a calmer situation and so yeah I think the best tool um, against judgment is one of the simplest tool which is like just write it down and you'll see it's like way less dramatic than it was in your head you know yeah, I like that you shared that because one of the things that I think is something that we often miss is that if we were sitting with somebody who shared that a, an upset, big or small, we would probably be significantly more patient with them than we tend to be with ourselves. And even just learning that level of patience allows us to learn truly what compassion is. Because you because compassion feels natural in relation to other people. But for some odd reason, we have to learn compassion for ourselves. Which so which like it always strikes me as odd that we tend to exclude ourselves from those type of concepts. So it was interesting that one of the things that came through in the sermon was just again acceptance and self-acceptance and i feel like the whole journey is truly learning to understand what that actually means because we are learning what it actually means like i, I feel like sometimes the more i find out the more i find out like the more i learn the more i know i need to learn kind of thing and it, you know it's just it's just interesting how that kind of snowballs and as you said, it's like it's 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 no there's no small upset, but there's also no small learning. Like we we, we learn so much, and realize that we're learning so much, but we also realize that hey, we're still learning so much. Like our capacity to absorb these things is so much more significant than what we actually give ourselves credit for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it made me think of like we learned so much and there's still yeah, there's still a long journey ahead. And, and then yeah, you can better just like yeah, that is more reasons to accept all these upsets and everything that comes up because they keep coming and it's better to yeah, really enjoy the 
the healing work and be efficient with it because you spent yeah you, you spent a lot of, lot of time with it and so resistance is making it harder or like uh, like a thing you have to do or like you can't really avoid it so yeah yeah that's true you can't avoid it and you can control it i think yeah. what you two were speaking about was like the other side of resistance the, the control and um yeah if you're if you're thinking that oh i feel that and that was what i the only upset that i saw um in my consciousness and now i have words and and now i expect to to um but it's over that I'm with my twin flame and it's done and I'm gonna be happy forever. Well, that's not true. Like you you can control um the upsets that are going to come up until you're in perfect union with God, basically. And if you control that, um you're going to control control the flow as well because you're going to resist the next um, episode of healing and and you're going to say like I don't understand I thought that I had healed everything and instead of like doing the inner work and um, basically reducing that time to uh, between like a upsets is like made known and be it is healed and you're just going to delay it. And, uh, and yeah, that isn't to say that you, you can't learn, but I think like why, where we get stuck is, is thinking that not surrendering to the flow, basically. So not even thinking, it's not even like something that we would do consciously because obviously we want our good, we want God, we want our twin flame. But it's... um this unconscious thing of like not surrendering to the flow of God, like resisting and and yeah. So it's it's so simple as we said, but it takes practice to reduce this time between like A and B. And um it's it's okay that it takes time. It's okay to take weeks for an upset at the beginning and then like shorten that time slowly but surely. And um, yeah, I feel like this sermon is just like another support guide, like really supportive, um, you know, video media for us to, to think about when we have challenges and say like, oh, well, it's all right. I just have to heal it. and just have to to take baby steps and it's going to be okay like there's no upset that i can heal and i know that yeah i think something that stood out for me was also just you know our ability to learn when those cycles actually come up so like I feel like there's this there is actually a very cyclical process to the depth of upsets. So like they, they for me they come up in small pieces, but they lead towards something. And then I move past that kind of that that bigger piece of healing, and then it's small things again. And it's, you know, like it literally, I can, I can feel when it's building up to a big piece of healing. It's just like, it, and I can't even explain it to you. It's just, it's just a feeling. It's just knowledge that there's, there's probably something that it, that it's building towards. And so the small pieces are kind of tilling the ground, up, you know, removing sand to get to a level of root. And then, and then once you get to that level of root, you kind of realize, okay, get more, till more sand because there's more roots. It's kind of deeper. 
and you know again it's just it's always that feeling that something more is coming and it's not living in the anticipation of it but like literally are being able to identify that most things happen in cycles and it's okay for it to happen in cycles and it's kind of not appropriate to try and bypass those cycles i um uh, it reminds me of, of a book actually twin planes finding your ultimate lover because there is um a chapter talking about i think i don't know if it it's a chapter of preparing towards ominous union or ominous union how it works sorry but i think or the upset stage i think and uh, Jeff and Shoya were talking about like upsets were coming and going. It was a challenging time, but at the same time, we were able to to um, kind of notice the pattern, the cycle of upsets. Like there was a cycle of about like two and a half weeks, and every two and a half weeks, like the big upset would come and a challenge would come. And when it would calm down, it was like the ebb and flow and there would be little upsets, but it was in between these times that they could like build a lot of things and, and work. And then a big upset would, would arise yet again. And so, yeah, it's, it's important to take stock of that so that you're not surprised about the next wave of upset and also not to be like scary or anything that it, this is going to be your life until until you have healed every single upset in your consciousness and so we are all doing that um people in harmonious union are doing that jeff and Shelly are doing that and the cycle it never stops um it's probably not going to stop in your life and it's safe to safe to accept that and it will be way easier and as you said you're you're able to like see um, when when something big is going to happen, and I feel like I'm kind of the same way, and I think that's why like little upsets are not to be judged, just healed, you know, because just this morning I was healing something that seemed like a little upset or something that I had healed already in the past, and then it led to deeper and deeper upset and it was like oh so that's what it was okay i see now but you can have that vision and that understanding clarity and peace um from um from a from i guess a um, judgmental point of view something that is not focusing on healing just like I guess like Alexandra said, like just saying like, oh, there's a deep pit cave of darkness. Oh, it's fair, whatever. <laughs> no, you you gotta dive into it <laughs> and um see what's inside because you're not going to understand it or have peace if you if you just like just see it and then don't do anything about it. Yeah, when you were talking about the cycles, I was reminded of how I moved through life before this work. And actually, as you were talking, I realized it's always been happening. We just were not aware of it yet and didn't know how to move through it. But I remember there's always like some point like comes like deeper upsets or problems and then it fades away a bit. And then, yeah, it's really cool. Um, yeah, now we can actually heal it and move beyond that and have different things coming up. And yeah. And something that you guys shared earlier, I feel like it's probably good to just also reiterate is that feeling of hitting a wall. You know, like, and, and it's sometimes it's not hitting a wall, it's just that feeling of stuckness. Like, you can't actually lift your feet out of the freaking mud at some point. 
And I feel like that probably brings on a lot of frustration in the healing journey because it's like, why am I not getting past this? Like, what is this still doing here? Or why am I not moving forward? And I, and the ancient and Alexandra touched on it quite a bit in the sermon in, in just in terms of even that stuckness serves a purpose. It serves a purpose because it encourages you to go deeper. It's literally the point at which you go, okay, well, we're not doing that right now. We are actually going to heal this. And I feel like that's kind of been the bigger part of the journey is just like, even no matter what it is, like it comes up and it's like, mm, what's happening here? And often I have, to sit, I have to take a step back and I have to, to actually stop thinking about the upset. Stop thinking about the narrative, stop thinking about the context, stop thinking about the situation move on to something else and then the upset kind of becomes more clear so yes we want to be efficient but we also don't want to push ourselves to go and find the upsets and i think sometimes we are accustomed to pushing because that is our that is our, like that is what we've been taught we've been taught to constantly be on the move to constantly work towards something but at some point, we kind of also need to learn that pushing ourselves too hard, too quickly is also not okay. And it's kind of learning that rest is okay. It's learning that focusing on something else for a little bit is okay. It's literally, it's literally the thing that we always get taught. Like if you're stuck with something, let it go for a little bit. Just leave it alone. And the clarity prevails because actually, while you're consciously deciding to let it go, your mind's working in a different way. And when your mind is working in a different way, that's flow. Your mind is working in a much more peaceful way. That's flow. Your feelings are flowing in a much more peaceful way. So then you can find the niggle, you can find the discomfort, you can find what's actually not comfortable. And it's really, your, your upset is literally the discomfort. It's always a discomfort in some way or another. And it's okay to look at it in that way. Like if, you, if, we, if we're looking for major... Hollywood headlines sometimes is not going to happen. It's kind of what actually doesn't feel comfortable right now. And feeling into why that doesn't feel comfortable. And I, li I, li I like how Alexandra and Lorenzo just said, like, you know, actually ask yourself the questions. It's actually okay to ask yourself the questions. And I don't think that we often get taught to ask ourselves basic questions like that. We would do it with somebody else very easily, very simply, because we cared to do that. We've learned how to do that. But we don't necessarily always just take the time out and ask ourselves the questions. Like, what is actually not comfortable about this? And that is how you get to the, you get to the comfortable space of identifying what that upset really is. I have to share the thought that because throughout the sermon, <clears throat> Lorenzo and Alexandra very share about the, the balance that you gotta have about the inner work. They share the disclaimer, like um, if you have a desire to go faster, like this is the way, but you're not obliged to go faster. And you don't have to push yourself. And also the very first thing that they shared was accepting where you are right now. And I think it all comes down to um, learning to hear and trust like what God asked of you 
at this very moment. And it may differ a lot from, from what we're used to because, um, you know, we might want our twin flame right this second, but God is like, actually, um, Gavet wrote just before. And I think the card reading was talking a little bit about that, you know, it was not about controlling the journey, uh, but it was about manifesting your divinity, your divine self. And sometimes it goes through um, changing colleges, for example, when you didn't want to or didn't think about changing college. But God is like calling you to go to that college that is maybe better suited or better aligned with your with your soul design, for example, with your life purpose. And at first you don't know why you're called to do that. But all these ingredients, all these steps, they, they amount to the mastering of your peace and, and right, how you have harmonious strength and union. But it's not about pushing and pushing and pushing, you know, it's not about trying to, to dig for an upset when you're not feeling upset. Because actually, in that moment of peace, what they shared was that you do the most, you create your life, um, you have fun, um, you grow into your life purpose. And these are steps and a way of like being and a state of peace that attracts your good, you know, in um in a multiplied way, you know, it's like amplified. Um, it's attracted to you so so much faster, including your harmonious twin flame union. And uh, so yeah, it's like it really shows that we're not asking people to slow down. It's not asking for balance because like God wants to delay your good. Um, but it's actually perfect for your journey. It's a whole, it's all one thing that comes together to give you your good. And you might think that it's only inner work or it's only meant to be unpleasant until, until like you're with your twin flame and there is no more upset. But no, actually you're learning that there will always be upset, but you can enjoy your life at the same time and preparing you for an even deeper level that is harmonious union, that is exactly the same, but just like further on your journey. Yeah, I'm learning that lately to, to balance is because I also I was tending to get an upside, just look at it and until it was healed, but I didn't do anything else. And yeah, that was really not compassionate. Yeah, so it's really good to yeah, just move on with life and also not forget about it, like not not as a way as in like escaping the the upset, because you you feel bad the whole time anyway. So yeah, I feel like when you go do something else or find yeah, go keep going with your life while you still work through that upset then then that shit that yeah, then it feels good. Then you're you're processing in the back of your head, let's say, and then you go back and then you've posted that more while supporting yourself and just having fun and doing things you like and yeah, and then you can keep moving. Mm. Yeah. No, I think it's cool that you mentioned that because that, that's something that stood out for me in the sermon as well. And it's a good reminder that, you know, you still actually have a life. Your life is not only about healing upsets. And it it's it it just came out again, you know, just the reiteration that actually you're still having a relationship with life, you're still living a life, you still need to 
be in your joy. You need to be in your peace. You need to handle what comes up. And I feel like that that's probably something that very early in the journey, we kind of, we all, and majority of us get caught in this trap of feeling like we have to heal and heal and heal and heal and heal. And it's not always appropriate for your journey because in healing and healing and healing, you're not giving yourself time to actually integrate your healing which is probably the more important part of your healing journey is the integration of that healing as opposed to just perpetually healing. And I think something that in the beginning was, was very bizarre to me was when people were talking about upheaval. I was like, what is this upheaval thing? <laughs> like, what are you doing? Surely it's not that difficult. And, you know, it's just, it's just that, that, thing about letting go of the comparison like we all take different lengths of time to integrate our healing and our journeys are all different and so it, it, it again it's letting go of comparing where you are in comparison to where other people are on their journey or what they've healed through, or what they've processed through, or what they're sharing at the moment. Yes, we, we share things that are appropriate and that help other people along the journey. But at the same time, we also need to, again, develop the, the space and time to allow for the integration, to allow for us to release the resistance, for us to just become comfortable again and move back into our flow of peace. And I think that that's, that's for me, that the core that stood out is just getting back into the flow of your peace. And something that you shared as well, Yurin, from the sermon is just like you do more when you are in that, in that space of peace, as opposed to feeling scattered and feeling pushed and pulled in all sorts of directions like you, like the, your energy just generally flows more easily and so you are able to just do more it's just such a natural space like if you're in your joy you're probably capable of making magic if you're not in your joy everything feels like work and it's not necessarily meant to feel like work Yeah, I was just integrating what you were saying. Uh, it's really beautiful. And I think it goes back to that very simple concept of life that Jeff and Julia share. Like, what is the meaning of life? What is the purpose of life? Because a lot of people are asking themselves, like, what is the true purpose of life? And what is the purpose of God creating us? And it, they just share that it's to enjoy life. And so obviously they share about the challenges and what is not easy, but they share this so that we can heal them faster. And in healing them faster, we can get more of these moments when we enjoy life and more and more and more until like life is just enjoyment. Basically it's heaven. No, it's really beautiful, and it's if you if you have that in your mind, like of course, of course, um, you know, any upset is healable, and of course you're gonna get through this, and of course you're gonna have the life of your dreams, because if you if you change your focus to um, to have that in mind, you're gonna feel that everything is is possible like love makes it possible and as we said at the beginning separation is an illusion so why would you just experience upset and why would you just experience like challenges and why would you just experience being separated from your twin flame that's not your natu natural state of of being you know Yeah, I was just thinking that also like we're 
doing all the healing work to be back with God and home and heaven and we are not created to you upset <laughs> or like but this work is just temporary even when it feels like a really long time and yeah this is a good reminder to focus on that and not focus on the upset but on being back to love yeah I um yeah the very last thing that I thought about regarding the sermon was um the fact that um you I don't know how to phrase that but you can't control the timing um of your life you can control the the sacred plan God's plan you can't say like in a month I'm, I'm gonna be in harmonious union because you you don't know that but you gotta surrender to the flow and I think what Yana was expressing is that you it's okay you don't have to count the days and months and years until you have your good because you're just gonna delay what is in front of you which is actually building you know building your life and um, having the building bricks and, and just like moving them into place until, until you're at the life of your dreams and you're just manifesting it. And yeah, so it's, um, I guess the journey is all about surrender. And I think I had something else to say, but I forgot, but yeah, do you guys have any thoughts on that? No, I think you've summed it up nicely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Well, do you feel complete about this discussion? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. feeling good. It's feeling like we've reached the end. So nice. Thank you so much for this discussion just after church tea time thank you to everyone who watched live with us or is watching afterwards on our youtube if you're on youtube and you've liked this discussion don't forget to like and subscribe um, to see more of our discussions and sunday services um, several times a week yeah so with that i'm gonna wish you a beautiful sunday and namaste thank you Bye-bye.